Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick2. Today I'm going to be making a very quick video just showing you guys what all the new exotics do and what all the old exotics do because they did get retroactively changed as well as how you can obtain all of these exotics. Um, of course, I did not make this spreadsheet, so huge credit to Ahmad and huge credit to the person that posted this on Reddit. Um, big credit to those guys. I take no responsibility for making all of this. Some of these things might be a little bit outdated. I'm not 100% sure, but the majority of them should be pretty accurate, if not all of it. So we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about how you can, or what all the new exotics do and what all the old exotics do and their talents, etc. And then I'll show you guys how you can get them. I will, of course, have links to this uh, Reddit post and this sheet uh, spreadsheet in the description. Uh, first, we're just going to talk about it and then we're going to talk about how to get it. But Personally, if there's anything that interests you here, I would just, you know, open the sheet and open the Reddit post and then cross-reference it. So I'm going to zoom in here so it's a little bit easier to read things. And I move my camera all the way down so that it's not in the way of these things. So first off, Assault Rifle, the Bighorn, has a talent big game. When you when you are scoped, switch it to semi-automatic fire mode, dealing 450% weapon damage with each shot. And the mods are as follows, you know, 7% headshot damage, stability, accuracy. I don't think that's that great, but whatever. I'm going to kind of refrain from giving my full opinions on these. Um, but if something looks particularly strong, then I'll, I'll talk about it. Uh, Eagle Bear, it got changed a little bit. The accuracy only goes up to 30% now. And Headshot Kills Grant Tenacity buff still. Somebody's calling me on Discord because they're stupid. Okay. And the strength of Tenacity is increased by 1% for body shots and 5% for headshots. 40 to 80% of the damage taken is delayed until the buff will actually expire. That's what Tenacity does. So it no longer is giving you additional damage. It's just uh, delaying a lot of damage. So it's pretty good for survivability, I suppose. And these are all of the uh, mods right here. You know, crit chance, extra round, stability, crit damage. The Chameleon. Pretty much the same thing. Hitting 30 headshots grants 20% crit and 50% crit damage for 45 seconds. Hitting 60 body shots grants 80% weapon damage for 45 seconds. And hitting 30 leg shots grants 150% reload speed. And then the mods are 15% accuracy, 20 rounds, 10 crit chance, and 5 crit chance. Chameleon, the talents are pretty good. The problem with it though is that um, the accuracy on it and the gun's damage by itself is not that great, but hey. So now we have a new exotic, the Bullet King, which is actually a Negev. The talent is called Bullet Hell, where, where this weapon never actually needs to be reloaded. And for every 100 bullets that hit an enemy, you replenish some ammo to your and your allies' reserves. I think the second part is pretty useless, um, but never having to reload is kind of cool. And then you get 10% stability and 5 crit chance on the mods, so the mods are pretty weak there. And then Pestilence got a pretty significant change. Um, you still apply debuff with hits, dealing 100% weapon damage over 10 seconds, and this stacks up to 50 times. And then whenever an enemy dies with the debuff, all the stacks are transferred to a nearby enemy within 25 meters. So this is pretty good. Um, I'm not 100% sure if when you kill somebody, if you have like five stacks on somebody, if, the, if those five stacks go to another person, and then you keep shooting that, that other person, and then it goes up more stacks. Overall, it's pretty solid if you're doing difficult content and there's mobs with like a huge amount of health pool where you can just get this weapon damage buff over them. Um, that seems pretty strong overall. So Pestilence seems really nice and it has the magazine is 10% rate of fire, 20% weapon handling and 25% stability. The Nemesis uh, shots fired deal 0 to 100% weapon damage based on how long the trigger is held. So pretty much the same thing, just not as strong. It does not apply the mark anymore, it seems. Then you get headshot damage, reload speed, damage to elites, and crit damage on the mods. Now there's a new pistol called Regulus, I guess. Headshot kills do a 400% weapon damage and apply a bleed to enemies within 5 meters of the enemy killed. I don't think that's that good because within 5 meters means they have to be literally right next to them. Um, but interesting enough, I guess. The Liberty. Um, gain a stack on each hit up to 30. And headshots consume all stacks, repairing your shield for 3% per stack. I don't think this is worth because the Liberty's RPM is very low. And for this to even be worth it, you'd have to have, you know, like 20 stacks to even see it, like, give you a noticeable thing. But hey, if you want to run it with the shield build, go for it. Um, you get 10% crit chance, damage to elites, rate of fire, and stability. Rate of fire on a deagle is kind of weird. Um, now we have the Ravenous. Talent, Gary and Frecky. On trigger pull... Fire both barrels at once, so I miss... Oh, it's a rifle, actually. When fired from the right shoulder, hits odd, add offensive primers and defensive primers when fired from the left shoulder. When detonated, each offensive primer deals 75% weapon damage, while each defensive primer grants 2% bonus armor. Primer effectiveness is doubled at 10 stacks. So, 
this is another one of those things where it'd be helpful if you're shooting a boss that has like a ton of health, but otherwise using it as a main weapon, not that cool or not that good rather, but it does have a cool effect, I suppose. And then for the mods, you get crit chance, reload speed, stability, and crit damage. And now we have the diamond back, which has always existed. Diamond back randomly marks an enemy. Hitting that enemy consumes a mark, guaranteeing a crit with 25% additional uh, crit damage. And then a new random enemy is marked afterwards and whenever you reload. Honestly, not that good, but it's all right. You get 10% accuracy, damage elite, stability, and crit damage. Then the merciless slash ruthless. Uh, binary trigger. This weapon is equipped with a binary trigger that fires on trigger pull and release. If both bullets hit the same enemy, you gain a stack. At 7 stacks, shooting an enemy creates a 7 meter explosion, dealing 900% weapon damage. So, it's very good if there's like a whole bunch of group or enemies like clumped up, but that's not going to happen very much, so eh. Alright, I guess. And you get accuracy, reload speed, weapon handling, and stability. Kind of, kind of garbage uh, mods there. And then you got Sweet Dreams. Melee attacks instantly kill non-elite enemies, but it has a 15 second cooldown. I don't know if you want to risk running <laughs> a melee build, but there you go. Uh, you get 15% accuracy, reload speed, and 25% optimal range. Lady Death is a new SMG that seems like a lot of fun to get, or to use rather. You have Talent, Breathe Free. When moving, you gain 4 stacks per second, or 8 stacks if you're sprinting, up to 40 stacks total. Each round fired consumes a stack, amplifying damage by 60%. Kills grant 20% movement speed for 10 seconds. So I guess you could run for a few seconds, get 40 stacks, and then you're going to have 60% additional uh, bonus damage during, what, for, for 40 shots? So I guess like a full mag, and then you could just reload, sprint some more, get 40 stacks and shoot, and have 60% damage. That's pretty strong, it seems like, and the movement speed seems like a lot of fun. Although you are using an SMG, seems particularly good for PvP though, maybe. You get crit chance, reload speed, crit damage, and crit chance again. So, Lady Death actually seems pretty cool. Chatterbox. When you reload, your rate of fire is increased by 20% for each enemy within 15 meters for the duration of that magazine. That seems pretty good. Max stacks 50. Or max stacks 5, sorry. Kills refill 50% of your magazine. Chatterbox isn't that good in terms of its damage, but the buff is kind of cool. You get 5 crit chance, 10 reload speed. 15 weapon handling, and 10 crit chance. For the backpack, uh, the, the rest of these are going to be uh, pieces of gear. For the Acosta's Go Bag, you get talent 2 in the bag, which gives you an armor kit, uh, 3 grenades, 25% ammo, 10% skill repair, and 10% status effects. Okay. Uh, then we got a chest. Tardigard armor system. Talent is a blade of no plating. Whenever you or an ally's armor breaks, they gain 80% of your armor as bonus armor for 10 seconds cooldown per ally is 45 seconds killing an enemy with your specialization removes this cooldown for all allies it seems kind of cool although the 45 second uh cooldown is a little much but um i mean it makes sense getting 80 percent of your armor seems like it would be really good for the raid but hey whatever and then we got the btsu data gloves detonating a hive refreshes all ally skill cooldowns and grants them overcharge Allies receive this effect. Are allies receiving this effect are unable to benefit from it again. So, has a two-minute long internal cooldown. Not that great. And then we have the Dodge City Gunslinger's holster. Quick draw while your pistol is holstered. Gain a stack. Gain a stacking buff for every 0.5 seconds up to 100. When you swap to it, your first shot consumes a buff and deals plus 10% damage per stack. So, if you just held your pistol for a long time and then swap to it. I guess you'd have 1,000% extra damage, which seems kind of cool, I guess. But I don't know that you'd ever run it. But maybe paired with the Liberty, you'd do like a huge shot. I don't know. Probably not worth running, though. Imperial Dynasty, you get Dragon's Glare. While in combat, applies a burn to the enemy closest to you within 20 meters. Cooldown, 40 seconds. So, kind of cool, but 40 second long cooldown. Probably not worth using. The Ninja Bike Messenger Knee Pads. Performing a cover to cover or vaulting instantly will reload your drawn weapon, so this is pretty good. And then let me move my uh, head so you can see the rest of this. We got the Sawyer's knee pads. Grace under fire cannot be staggered by explosions. Staying in cover without firing for 6 to 12 seconds provides damage immunity while aiming for 1 to 2 seconds, so this is pretty alright, I guess. Um, but you don't ever want to like not be firing for 6 seconds, but hey. Interesting, I guess. The damage immunity while you're uh, aiming is kind of cool. 
And then Coyote's Mask seems very strong. Um, you and all allies gain a bonus based on the distance of the last enemy that you hit. 0 to 15 meters, you get 25% crit damage. 15 to 25, you get 10% crit damage and crit chance. And 25 meters, you get 25% crit chance. And there's no cooldown on this. So Coyote's Mask seems like it's going to be best in slot. and seems like pretty much everybody's going to be using it. And I wonder if it stacks. If it stacks, then it's even better than it already is. So that's really good. And then in terms of the drop locations, I'm just going to go over all these, but you can, of course, read this yourself. For the Bighorn, Legendary Missions slash Strongholds have a 5% drop rate. Bullet King, you uh, you can get from Riker's Missions, has a 1% drop rate on Normal slash Hard, 3% on Challenging. Uh, or I guess... Hmm... There's there's three difficulties listed. I guess normal is 1%, hard is 3%, challenging is 5%, and heroic is 7%. Yeah, there you go. Regulus and Ravenous, we don't know yet. Lady Death, um, there's 22 world bosses in New York that both have that all have a 3% chance to drop it. Acosta's Go Bag, you can get from any of the faction crates, uh, has a 3% chance. The Tardigard Armor System, from True Shun's missions at 1% normal, 3% hard, 5% challenging, 7% heroic. Imperial Dynasty, Cleaner's Missions, 1% normal, 3% hard, 5% challenging, 7% heroic. Excuse me. The Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads you get from DZ Supply Drops has a 3% chance. I actually got those today, so I was pretty lucky that I got that. And then the Coyote's Mask you get from the Season 1 uh, Battle Pass type thing at rank 35, so I guess we're all just going to have that when it comes out in like a few days. And then... From Strongholds, you get the 8% drop chance for the Liberty, Merciless, Diamondback, Sweet Dreams, Nemesis, Chatterbox, Pestilence, Gunslinger Holster, BTSU Gloves, Sawyer Knee Pads, and the Chameleon. And then on Heroic Missions, you can get an 8% drop chance for pretty much all the same thing. And then Legendary Missions is a 10% drop chance. So any of the missions slash Strongholds at a high enough difficulty have a high chance to drop these. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want me to make a video talking about the um, named items and doing kind of like the same thing, uh, please let me know and I will try to get all the information on how to get all the named items and what they do and I will post that for you guys. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Peace.